everybody out there. Just a um, little bit of a get together. Obviously, I'm uh, OTBT 4x4, which is a YouTube channel. Started the start of this, start of actually uh, last year. Had a bit of footage going up there. Then obviously we went through COVID, which was a lockdown. So obviously that uh, put us all away here in Victoria, Melbourne, Australia. So I spent probably over 300 odd days in lockdown in the last 18 months. So I really haven't been able to do much much footage uh, out there out on the tracks. But obviously got out there early this year with a Canon uh, ute that we uh, we deal with ourselves personally from the industry that I'm in and uh, took that out on the tracks at uh, Mount Disappointment to uh, to see how the uh, the Canon would uh, fit out there on the tracks and actually exceptional uh, for a vehicle that's come out fairly new to Australia. It, um, it performed very well. The electronic aids, the 4x4 system on it was uh, absolutely superb um but yeah unfortunately we can't go out and do any any footage because we're uh we're in lockdown as you can see me wearing my uh fight mmnd hat because it's pretty cold here in melbourne at the moment uh you can see the the music room here taking shape slowly um if anyone knows me i've sort of played drums on and off for about 30 years decided last year in the first lock set of lockdown to uh take up guitar and uh, found an acoustic guitar in the cupboard that used to belong to one of my daughters and uh, restrung it and uh, got that going and tuned it and uh, through that meantime of uh, the world of uh, YouTube I've, I've studied heaps of things online to do with setting up a guitar, fixing a guitar, repairing a guitar you know watching all these people like you know Rosa Stringworks, Red Shul, um, Party Marty uh, learning things as I'm, as I'm watching online, you know, learning how to set up a guitar properly, repair it, um, learn to play as, as good as I could learn to play at 53 at the time or 54 now. So obviously the fingers ain't as as flexible as they were when I was in my 20s, but it's a good experience because obviously when you're in lockdown, you do have a fair bit of time on your hand if you're not allowed to go to work that you've. Uh, Got to do other things, so take up your hobbies. You know, I'm into HO train, so I play with that as well, and still in the process of finishing that off. Um, obviously, uh, became a grandfather in the last month, so first grandchild in the family. So little Alina was born to my oldest. Um, but yeah, this this video is more about lockdown, what people are doing during lockdown. You know, anyone that knows me knows for the last nine months I've been saying I'm going to buy an electric guitar kit and build one and spray it and emulate a Stratocaster from the 60s so to my uh, surprise on the 13th of October which was my birthday my family had purchased me a kit online without my knowledge a Stratocaster an ST style guitar kit um, so this this video is about off the beaten track when you're uh, you can't get out there and you're at home doing things in your own time and trying to stimulate your senses. So just to give you an idea, um, it's a, from what I can see, it was Bex Gears guitar. Uh, the book inside says Harley Benton. Um, so yeah, the, the manual that came with it is, is like that. Um, it does say Harley Benton e-guitars kit, ST style down the bottom. If anyone can see that. So that's the sort of kit that I've got. You know, it's, um, it's got a rosewood um, neck, a maple a maple neck, which is absolutely superb. Um, it's come out already satined, so it, it is so smooth. From everything that I've read, everyone complains about these e kits that they, um, you know, you can't play on them because they're very sharp. There is no sharp edges on this uh, one fret, which was this fret here. The, number, the second fret there from the top was a little bit high with the fret rocker when I was testing it out. That's all been uh, sanded down. It's all been machined uh, down by hand. Obviously, it is very, very, very straight. Um, obviously, this thing's going to emulate a 67 Stratocaster. That was the goal to paint it in Olympic white. Very hard to get Olympic white in Australia, but the closest colour to it, which would look a little bit more aged, is a colour through Rustaloom called... Um, satin and it's a heirloom white which is very very similar I mean it, it looks like that and it'll be that sort of creamy white which is what I wanted I didn't want a bright white and then I'm also going to use the Rustaloom satin clear to finish it off and we'll go through all those stages as I get into that point I'm just going to move the camera from the tripod 
just to give you an idea. I've got a fairly basic setup in this room at the moment. I've got a little a little table that allows me to um, see the stuff that I'm working on with some lights. To give you an idea, that's the guitar there. I've already started sanding it, so it's fairly smooth. It was pretty furry. I mean, the neck was superb, but the, the actual guitar itself was fairly, fairly, um, you know, cut well, but fairly, fairly rough in its finish. So obviously I've used uh, 220 and up to 400 grit to get it really, really good. There's a couple of little areas that I still need to finish, but obviously the next step is to mask off the centers and then obviously paint up that body to the color of my choice, which is obviously the heirloom white, which is gonna emulate Olympic white. I'm just gonna see if I can reverse this camera around so I can actually see what I'm doing. Yeah, that one. She ain't changing. Right, we're still recording. So yeah, the goal is to get all the information out of this box. I don't know why I can't reverse this screen. Eventually it'll turn around. I might just pause to see if I can reverse the camera so I can at least see what I'm filming. Give me one sec. Yeah, that's better. So you can actually see the body there. The bo I'm just on a tripod camera at the moment. The body's actually quite good. Um, yeah, it's amazing how they actually do it and how they produce such a pretty good result from their machining, even though their tools mightn't be the sharpest tools in the block. They do come out with a pretty good body. It's pretty smooth. You can see the underside. It's probably a little, a little bit of roughness somewhere here. A little bit of damage as well, a little bit of furriness here. But um, I'm about to take it out under the, under the, into the workshop and I'll, um, I'll get that body pretty well right to be sprayed. Obviously I've got some cans here that I just had to go and pick up from Bunnings. So you've got to do click and collect because you're not allowed to in the stores. Great thing about this kit, it actually came with a Hayes tuner. So there was a Hayes tuner that arrived with it in the, in the packaging. Um, some of the packaging is here. So she came with a white pick guard. So all the electronics are there. I mean, you read, you hear and read about all the electronics being fairly average. I mean, my job is just to be just to put it together and obviously I'm still learning to play. So I'll um, obviously be um, having a crack with that. The lead, yep, yeah, don't know about that. I think it even came with a pick from memory. <laughs> it did too. Um, Polish came with all the Allen keys to adjust everything up so you can set up your intonation. Uh, and then all the hardware. I mean, the probably I was shocked with the, was with the bridge because everyone said these things are quite light. This is actually quite heavy, so it's quite a solid bridge. But I'll be interested to see what it sounds like when it's all finished. But yeah, all the hardware's in there, it's all chrome. Tuners, you know, you hear everybody talking about tuners being really cheap and really nasty. I'm not going to know until I set it up. Um, see what sort of quality they come out when they're all tuned up correctly and it's all set up right but yeah that's all the boxes of stuff there that came with it obviously the next step is to um, get it all together and then um, try and get it to play but that's the reason I was doing this this video here was just to um, give everyone a bit of a rundown what everyone's doing during lockdown obviously you can't do a lot so most of the stuff you're doing is at home we've had restrictions to 5k's and then 15k's where we couldn't go anywhere so it's been um it's been, it's been quite testing to see your endurance when you're not allowed to leave your house and you know you're obviously trying to do the right thing by protecting yourself and your family and others because you don't want anyone else getting COVID um obviously COVID is real so um, yeah, we're all double vaxxed here now, so we're all pretty well set up to come out of lockdown But uh, that's going to be an interesting time because you can still get it and actually still get sick So that's the one thing I'm going to try and avoid in my age But um, yeah, so yeah next sort of few videos that I upload will be uh, obviously with this thing um, 
being put together and uh, see what it sounds like. I'm obviously, obviously my first, I've got two acoustic guitars, I've got an old Delta, which is probably dating back to the 70s, and I've got another guitar that's probably about 20 years old, which was what my, one of my daughter's guitars, which has all been set up, so they're all pretty low action, easy for my hands on steel strings. Obviously the electric kits there and the monitors. But um, yeah, this used to be my oldest daughter's bedroom, so it's obviously in the process of getting some photos and pictures and that put up so I can at least um, have something sort of sort of memorabilia in this room. I'm just gonna reverse this camera again. That's the goal. The goal is to um yeah, get this get this electric kit going. See what it sounds like. I've only got a 10 watt uh, Samic amp, which is just perfect for me for acoustic to uh, to practice with. And um, I mean, majority of the time with the acoustic guitars, I don't even have the amp plugged in. I just sort of play um, by themselves. I mean, the the Delta guitar I bought as a used guitar and had to actually fix it up, which is the one behind me. But um, she already came with a passive um, amp in it, so I ended up purchasing another passive amp online. Waited about three months last year for that to arrive from from china so it was virtually identical to what was in the other guitar so that went in the other so both both the acoustic guitars have passive PA piazzo pickups in them and obviously the electric guitar is going to have its um electronics in it as well so you can hear that through the amp but um yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how this thing uh, turns out so it'll be the first one i've ever done i mean everyone knows that i'm pretty handy and i can fix things and have a go at anything so I don't think it's going to be hard, but I think the preparation is probably the key. If you're not prepping right, then obviously you're going to have blemishes and things showing through. I mean, I don't expect it to be perfect where it comes out of like a Fender store, um, but I'll, I'll do a pretty good job with the rattle cans and I'll, I'll document some of that as we go on through. So at least you can uh, at least have a look what, what, what we're all doing in Melbourne, Australia during lockdown. I mean, I've, I've been watching a lot of the YouTube channels and following a lot and subscribing to a lot of these people that I've been watching for the last three, four years. I mean, one comes to mind, Life on Container, been watching that couple building their container home, you know, moving from where they were in, um, down the end of America back into to Texas where they're, they're, uh, where they're working. Um, Danga Marine, I watch him as well, because I'm into, I love boats and I love motors and things like that. So <laughs> anything to do with someone having a good go out there fixing things up, I love to watch, so. The guitar seems to be the, the one that's now inspiring me. Uh, you have to go out there and buy a whole heap of tools like fret levelers and sanding, you know, files, um, fret leveling crowning tools, um, a fret leveling ruler, uh, gauges, all that sort of stuff. I bought all that online just to just, um, stimulate my senses, so learn as you go. But uh, I think we'll get this thing pretty right, pretty well set up. And then, uh, yeah, the next the next video will probably be when I start spraying and I'll document some of that. It's a bit hard to sort of do it on your own and get the tripod set up to a point where you can see what someone's doing when they're spraying. But I will um, I will endeavor to try and get some good uh, footage of this so people can see how this thing comes out as I'm, I'm watching it come out as well. Just wanted to say hello again and uh, everyone keep safe and uh, keep your chin up. Thank you. Here we are, uh, ready to paint the uh, ST Stratocaster in the heirloom white. I did say we were going to come back and have a crack. It's under the house here at the, in the workshop, so it's just in the open, so there's plenty of ventilation for me. But remind me to put my mask on. There is going to be a fair fair bit of fumes we want to get all the edges Coats to 
start off with just enough to get some coverage light coats. The timber's going to absorb it all, which will suck her in. I don't think she needs any more than that. The hair loom white does look exceptional. Actually stay there. Get all the edges. Might have to get it from this side. does want to spin a little bit of the probably going to take about three coats let's see if we can get her to come this way so we can see it in the light nope This is actually a primer, a filler, all in one. Does such a great job. Here we go. First coat. First coat.